Welcome readers. Today I'm interviewing award-winning audiobook narrator Janina Edwards. Learn about her career in narration and more, including her recent release, The Wedding Date, written by Jasmine Guillory. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and thank you for downloading this week's book chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Every week we get bookish with roundtable book discussions, five-minute shelf bites, interviews, and more. Subscribe to our newsletter so you don't miss out on any of this book nerd awesomeness. If you'd like to email in feedback or questions, feel free to reach out to me at info at shelfaddiction.com or call in and leave an internet voice message via SpeakPipe. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shelf Addiction. The links for everything related to today's episode, including Janina's social media links, are below in the show notes. If you know someone who may enjoy this episode, please share it with them today. Before we get started, let me tell you a bit about today's interview guest. Earphones Award winner Janina Edwards is a graduate of New York University's Titch School of the Arts and recorded her first audiobook in 1987. She excels in portraying authentic characters and voices in the African diaspora, including West Africa, Southern U.S., and West India. She's an Audi Award two-time finalist. Janina's voice can also be heard in corporate and educational recordings and for meditation. In addition to audiobook narration, Janina is also a yoga teacher, a musician, and is owned by two cats. I was pleased to have this opportunity to interview Janina Edwards, and I know you'll enjoy this conversation. Let's jump into the interview. Hi, Janina. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for asking me. Absolutely. I'm super excited to talk to you about your narration of the Wedding Date series. But before we get into that, let's learn a little bit about you and your career in narrating. So let's just jump in. Are you ready? I'm as ready as I can be. Tell us what you've been listening to lately. Um, I have been listening. A friend of mine got me to listening to uh, Alyssa Cole, her Reluctant Royals series. Uh, which I've been all about. And uh, I think I've gotten through the last one, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know about other people, but then I started going back and going to the parts that I really liked and listening to them again. Um, and I also have been listening to Molly Harper, her Mystic Bayou series. And, um, and then a lot of podcasts. I've been enjoying uh, Snap Judgment and This American Life. And going back to my audiobooks, I'm a big Nora Roberts fan. So pretty much anything that she does. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> so do you listen to her um, books that she wrote under J.D. Robb, I think it is? Do you listen to those too? Actually, no. I, I, straight up romance, thank you very much. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, okay. Um, I, it's, there's something, I, I don't know, that that series didn't actually call me, but, uh, but I, her, anyway, her, her romances, they usually have a, a mystery in them. But um, yeah, and if it's a series, I'm a sucker. I have to know what happens next. (laughs) Okay. Well, you mentioned the Alyssa Cole uh, series. It's um, funny. I actually had an interview that went live with her last month. So if you're curious about her talking about those books, you should check it out. I will. So obviously you like to listen to audiobooks for fun. So do you have any narrators that you enjoy most listening to as, you know, as a listener? Well, Amanda Ronconi does Molly Harper's books. And or as far as I can tell, she's done all of them. And I really like her a lot. Um, she seems to have that snarky thing down really well. Um, she's just a lot of fun. And she's, she ends up doing a lot of accents and such that uh, I just kind of really respect how she, what she adds to it. Um, Susan Erickson is a, a narrator that I really like. I don't hear her a lot, but I, I just have always really liked her and respected her. Um, and uh, who else do I listen to that I, I she's one of my go-tos. Um, uh, Tav- Tavia Gilbert, who's, you know, she's a award-winning <laughs> narrator. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah. <laughs> she's and, been on uh, the podcast too. She's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, g- proud to call her friend. And um, I, I'm sure there are others, but uh, those, those are the ones that are coming to mind immediately. Okay, wonderful. So um, I would love to know, how did you get into audiobook narration? Yeah, I'm going to try to be brief, but that it may, it, because my, <laughs> my, um, my dive into this is, is, uh, was not straightforward. So I did my first audiobooks and they weren't called this back then. Um, in 1987, um, I went to NYU, to New York University, 
And um, I was in the acting program. But, uh, you know, one big difference between doing acting in high school and college is that in high school, you're with your people. <laughs> you're with your little tribe of people and you, you do your shows and you do tech and you do performance and, you know, you just do it all and it's, you've got your support system. And um, long story short, I went to NYU and realized maybe, maybe I made my move too soon because <laughs> um, I didn't know anybody. And I really wanted to go, but I got there and I was all alone and I had no support system. So I'm in this mm. huge university in a city that I don't know, that I don't have any family in. And so I was just so intimidated by everybody. I didn't act in anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I actually did dance. And, uh, but I, my body type is not the willowy person, you know, so I was, uh, that wasn't, gonna, it wasn't like I could transfer to that as a major. So my point in saying all that is I was really shy, which um, ultimately um, after I graduated and I stayed in New York City, I was taking classes and things that I hadn't been able to take as an undergraduate. So some foreign languages, uh, jingles, and I, somebody, and I do not remember who said, you know, you might want to look into this, uh, the American Foundation for the Blind. They have this talking book thing and, uh, they need actors. And I said, okay. And being a naive, maybe 20 year old, (laughs) I called them up literally and said, Hey, I hear you use narrators to do, and probably didn't even say narrators, but you need people to read these books. And they said, and I'm not exaggerating. Well, we have who we need. If you were African American, you know, we might have something, but you know, and I said, guess, and I said, guess what? (laughs) African American. (laughs) And they said, Oh, you know, we have a couple of books you might be able to do. And I don't remember auditioning or I just remember it was a simpler time. (laughs) They literally had me come in. I did about six books back then. They were young adult titles. And uh, so that was those were the first books. And then there was a long period where I didn't do any of that. Um, Basically, life happened. Um, And uh, I had my daughter. I moved from New York City. I went back to Chicago, where I'm from originally. And um, I did a lot of volunteering, uh, reading for, there's something called a closed circuit radio station, and they'll do reading for the blind, uh, Georgia Radio Reading Service is an example. So I volunteer with things like that. I read to my daughter and did all the voices. And I had in the back of my mind that one day, you know, I wanted to get back to that thing that I did when I was, you know, young and back in school and all that stuff. <laughs> and um yeah. In, and in the meanwhile, in the background, you know, the technology was changing. And so uh, my daughter graduated from college in 2012. And this thing happens when your child uh, grad- goes to college, you get your life back, right? And I sort of started doing more um, at the Georgia Radio Reading Service. I was doing more books versus magazines for them. And I started working on um, just expanding this. And though this may not seem related, I did a yoga teacher training. And one thing that can happen when you do a a deeper yoga teacher training, as opposed to some that are just like do all the poses, is it really does start to change you. And I started looking at those intentions that I had that I was not actually realizing. And for me, that one of those things was this. Long story short, I started working in earnest on getting a demo made. I went to the Audio Publishers Association conference in uh, in 2012, and I assaulted <laughs> uh, <laughs> casting directors and said, hi, I'm me. Here's my card. And here's my, I mean, I actually had CDs. I was walking around with a, here's my CD. And I was there. I think I got there at 6 a.m. on a flight in the morning, and I went home that evening to Atlanta. But I just tried to make it count and... Uh, and I also was introduced to ACX, which is the Artist Creative Exchange. And so I did a bunch of titles through ACX. And then the publishers started calling me. And then start, things started to move. And I started to get more titles. So anyway, I hope that's not too long-winded. But uh, that's, that's, how we got, that's how we got to where I am now. <laughs> oh, that's an excellent story. So yeah. is there anything that you have, you know, wish you'd known when you started again as a narrator your second time around? I I can't say, nothing stands out to me. I mean, you know, I hear, I hear advice. (laughs) I hear folks say what you should do now. 
And, Mm -hmm. you know, like one of the things they tell you to not do is like, well, when you go to APA, the audio publishers conference, don't attack casting directors. And I'm like, well, I did that (laughs) check. (laughs) But but I don't think I don't think that was the wrong thing to do. You know, I I didn't have time to mosey around. (laughs) I needed to get to the point. Um, I had, you know, six hours or something and I was going to make it count. So, um, you know, and the things I feel like people need to know, I felt like ultimately I did do, um, I'll put it this way. One thing I thought about that, um, I was thinking I might share is that, um, being, being persistent in life in general is really important. And, you know, all those years between 1987, (laughs) when I did my first book Mm -hmm. in 2012, I didn't think I was being persistent. I thought actually I was just in this desert and I was, you know, I was just screwing around basically. And that this was just this little dream. And um, one of my yoga teachers actually said something that's, I think is really important. And they said, uh, discipline is about consistency. It's not about quantity. So to me, I don't know if you're seeing the connection, but to me it was like, I had that, that I had my eye on the prize. And so being persistent and not trying not to doubt myself, but also being persistent in terms of just uh, doing what you can do um, in the moment was, is really important. I don't know. I, I'm not just saying it very well, but, but that's, but I, I basically am just trying to say, keep on keeping on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. that's true. And you know, and that's, that applies like in every part of life, really. Mm-hmm. So is there one thing that stands out in your mind is like a really big challenge that you had um, overcome as a narrator? Honestly, I think the most challenging thing in some ways is the technology. Um, I, uh, when you, you know, when you work directly with publishers, there's a, some publishers, Many, many, many times you're in your home or wherever you record, you're in a booth by yourself (laughs) and Mm -hmm. you have to handle the technology. And some people use a a software called Pro Tools. I use a a software called Adobe Audition because when I opened Pro Tools, uh, when I opened the software, it scared the crap out of me. It's just like there's all these bells and whistles and I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't can't deal with this. And I just turn it off. Adobe Audition, you open it, it just looks, it just looks more user friendly. And so I can get intimidated by the technology. Um, even, you know, you're, uh, uh, what, when, you know, when computers first came out, they always gave you like these, these mammoth uh, instruction manuals, which it's intimidating to read, but at least you had the information. Now, um, somehow you're supposed to just, you know, they don't give you all that, you know, you're supposed to go online yeah. and, get your, and you're supposed to just somehow know, well, I'm not a sound engineer. I'm an actor basically. And I specialize yeah. in audio books. So the technology can get to me, but, but in terms of the, that, the, the part of the, the, I mean, I do this cause I love books. I do this cause I love acting. And for me, this is my, this is my, this is my stage. <laughs> this is where I mm-hmm. feel confident. I mean, like I said, I was, I was so shy in college that I couldn't, I saw all those people in a line for auditions and I just ran. When I go in my booth, it's like, this is my world. I don't, I actually feel very confident most of the time when I go in there. I get a little nervous about accents because I'm from Chicago. You know? um, I just <laughs> made my first trip to England, but I've been doing English accents for years. And I'm like, oh, please let this not be too horrible. And, you know, <laughs> my daughter and I went to England and, and it was hysterical because we're walking around, we're walking around going, ooh, this is an authentic British accent. We touch we not this. Stop, stop it. Stop talking like that. And we just couldn't stop talking like that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> but we didn't do it in anybody's face, but we, 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 yeah. we couldn't stop it. But my point is, I, I enjoy, I enjoy this work. So it's other than being a little fearful that I'm, you know, going to embarrass myself or something. Um, no, actually the books are, the books are fun. I get to do all the parts. What could be bad about that? But the technology, yeah. the technology sometimes intimidates me. Well, I'm glad that you brought up um, accents because I know that you excel in, you know, accents from West Africa or the Southern U.S. and even the West Indies. Is there any, you know, if any, are there any accents that you 
find that you especially struggle with? Um, Like, I'm just, 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 just beginning to hear the difference between, say, Scottish and Irish. Um, Mm -hmm. And and that's only after watching years of Netflix (laughs) that I'm starting (laughs) to hear it. Thank God for Netflix, right? Um, You you know, um, and, and hearing actual humans who are from there speaking it versus someone doing, I don't know, you know, Pepe Le Pew doing French accent or something. Um, so that, that stands out in part because that's a more realistic, I mean, what's, I'm black and African American. And so, you know, I don't typically worry too much about, oh, gee, I need to do a Russian accent. But, but Mm -hmm. one of the things I find fascinating in life in general is that Black people are from everywhere. You know? And yes. <laughs> uh, when I lived in New York City, uh, one reason why I do know how to do a West Indian accent is because I lived in Crown Heights uh, for a couple of years and, and uh, in, in Bed-Stuy. And, you know, there everybody's there. You know, the, the, the house that I lived in was owned by some folks from um, from Barbados. And so, you know, I was hearing it. I was, it was around me all the time. And I enjoy listening. I just enjoy hearing people's speech patterns. And um, so I'm saying that to say that uh, though I focus on those particular ones, I know that, you know, there could be a character uh, from anywhere who's, who's black. Um, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, Scottish and Irish I'm just beginning, and if you, I'm just beginning to get them straight in my head. Because if you can't hear the difference, you can't do it differently. You have to be able to hear it first. So, um, and I feel like I'm just beginning to hear uh, the difference between the two. Um, what else? Uh, New or New Orleanian, um, which, and we we say accents like people only have one accent and they're from someplace. And that's not true mm-hmm. at all. I mean, again, I'm from Chicago. I find that your accent, it's not just me who thinks this, your accent is a combination of where you're from, but also the, you know, economic status of your family, amount of education, all these different things influence how you sound. And so, yeah. you know, I'm African American, but, you know, I've, I've gone to college, I've had acting training. So some of that's, you know, cleaned up, so to speak. Um, my mother uh, grew up in Chicago and um, she's, she has certain speech patterns that, you know, I can tell that she's from Chicago. Her mother uh, also grew up in Chicago, but she, you know, her economic status was much lower and she sounded like that. And my aunt grew up in Alabama. So my point is that is we all sounded different. Um, yeah. And so, uh, so any, so you can, I won't say you don't have to pay attention to where somebody's from, but there's a lot of leeway in, you know, if you could, if you can look at that person's background or you create their backstory and justify uh, certain things, people in Ireland, uh, I want to say it's Dublin, but I may be wrong. Uh, like if you hear Bono speak, he's, he doesn't sound that different from, someone in the U S you know, who has a standard American accent, except when he says certain things and it's like, Oh, you're not from around here. <laughs> anyway, it's, yeah. I, find it fa- I find it fascinating. So, you know. Yeah, it definitely is. I know. Um, even if you're not from someplace, you can develop an accent. Uh, I like right. to think of my sister, you know, we, we grew up in the Metro Detroit area, but she lives, has lived in the South ever since she went to college and she never came back here, but she definitely has an accent now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you sound so different. Why mm-hmm. you talk so, you know, you slur your words, stop doing that. It's not <laughs> so you definitely can transform your own accent. I guess it's not specific to where you live actually anymore, right. like you said. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's really cool. I would love to know, do you have a dream author or a book that you just would love to narrate? Even though, even if one that's already narrated, if you could do another edition or something like that, do you have one or someone that you'd love to narrate for? Um, I'll give you two answers on that. Um, One, um, I was just talking to somebody about Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. And that's, and even though I haven't read it recently, it's like, 
it's like, you know, one of your, it's one of my favorite books. And I think the last edition on Audible is by Ruby D. And, and with all due respect to Ruby D, <laughs> I was like, I was actually surprised that there wasn't a more recent edition of it. And I was like, oh, that would be so cool <laughs> to do. And mm-hmm. I actually have a, a history with that book in that uh, when my daughter was in middle school, uh, she was reading that for school. And she came to me and she was like, mommy, I have no idea what's going on in this story. What are these people talking about? And I started reading it for her out loud. And she started listening to it and she started to get it. And she's like, oh, these people are like Aunt Bert. I was like, yeah. I was like, these are like, we know, you know, these people. And you just, but the book is written in dialect. So it's, you know, you have, you almost have to read it out loud to, to get it. Um, so that's one of my yeah. one, one answer. And then the other answer, uh, there's a book, uh, there's a series actually called, uh, it's a noir series, and it's set in different cities around the world. Um, there's Atlanta noir, there's Boston noir, there's New York noir, whatever. Um, and there's, so the Atlanta noir has not been produced. And it's a series of short stories. Um, and they're, they are noir, so they're a little offbeat. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. it's a really cool book. I think the editor is Tayari Jones and I would love to actually, what I'd love to do is produce it. Cause I don't, I, it's one where I don't think I would be the right person to do all of the stories. Um, I think it would be really cool to have, frankly, I think what I would really like, I'm just telling you my whole dream here. <laughs> okay. Um, it's Atlanta noir. It's by Atlanta authors. And I would love to do it with Atlanta narrators. Um, and so, you know, there's a bunch of us here and, uh, we're good. <laughs> and so I'd love to, you know, like have it be this by us for us kind of thing where, uh, Atlanta narrators picked a different, each di- picked a different story and we put that together and put it out there. It's my little dream. It could happen. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Let's put it in the universe. Let's put it out there. It can happen. Ding. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Today we are going to be talking about the wedding date series by Jasmine Gilroy. Did I pronounce her last name right? I know I you know. It, right. It's I believe it's Gillery. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so before we talk about that, let's hear a quick snippet and then we will come back and talk about what we just heard. Okay. She spied the cheese and crackers in the corner of her purse tucked away from the heavy champagne bottle. Just then, the elevator stopped with a jerk. A second later, the lights went out. What's going on? She said out loud to herself. A few seconds later, a dim light came on, but the elevator stayed motionless. She looked up and around and jumped to see a man with a suitcase in the opposite corner of the elevator. Were you here this whole time? She asked. What am I, a genie? He grinned back at her. I guess you don't really look like a genie. He was a tall, white guy with tanned skin, rumpled dark brown hair, and about a day's worth of scruff where a beard would be. She had a sudden urge to rub her hand on his cheek to see how prickly it was. How exactly had she missed seeing this man get on the elevator with her? Thank you, I think, but isn't that what a genie would say? He asked. You're not claustrophobic, are you? Um, I don't think so. Why, were you going to bust us out of here with your genie powers if I said I was? He laughed. I guess you'll never know if I'm a genie now, he said. Tell me a little bit about (laughs) what we just heard in the clip. What's going on there? All right. So in the clip, it's actually the very first uh, scene with uh, Drew and Alexa uh, where they meet. And it's a meet cute. I mean, <laughs> uh, they meet in an elevator. She's going upstairs at, an, at a hotel to meet her sister, who she's had a, a somewhat difficult relationship with. And um, he's at, he happens to be in the elevator and she doesn't notice him at first in the back. He's white. She's black. They're both, you know, um, he's a doctor. She's the, uh, what is it? What is the title? Um, chief of staff for the mayor in uh San Francisco, I think, uh, or Oakland. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember which it is right now. Um, and so they meet and they get stuck in the elevator together. That's the meet cute part. 
And so they start uh-huh. to get to know each other. Exactly. They start to get to know each other. <laughs> and it turns out that he is there for a wedding. And uh, actually, I guess it's anyway, he's there to attend a wedding or, or for the for the um, engagement party. And he needs a date <laughs> because he he's in a difficult situation. He used to date the bride to be and he's best friends of the of the um, groom. And he's coming there alone. And so he basically needs a, a foil. And he asks her after they meet in the elevator and they're getting along so well, he asks her to be his date. And thus the craziness ensues. And uh, they go from this fake couple to, through the course of the story, to being a real couple. And, you know, this is why we have romantic comedies. <laughs> Um, yeah, it sounds like it because he's got a lot going on there. <laughs> he definitely does. Um, I really like, I, I've really uh, enjoyed doing Jasmine Guillory's books because her books have a sense of humor. So, mm-hmm. you know, with romances, and I am, I am, I'm not just a, a member, I'm a fan. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. You have so many contrived things that happen in these stories and you just want to beat people's head against the wall. And I won't say this doesn't have that aspect to it, but I think she has a sense of humor about it. She, you know, she can see the silliness and also the challenge challenges that they face rang true to me. Um, there's a party where he has her come and she arrives. And as a black woman, she goes, Oh, great. I'm the only black woman in the room. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> been, been there. there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, and, yeah. And, and Drew's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she's like, you should have told me. And he has to go through this education where he realizes, oh, I can't, I can't do that to her. I've got to like, you know, cause he hasn't looked through those eyes before. So he's like, okay, I have to be aware of that. So that's one example, but it's like, oh yeah, that this is, this is, that's real. You know, um, uh, I call it the raisin in the sun syndrome. And it's like, oh, here we are. Um, and but she has a sense of humor about it. She has some uh, things that speak true to my experience as a black woman. And um, but also we meet we meet and it's cute and it's romance. So you know it's yeah. there, there's sex in it, but it's not. Um, again, I'm old enough to remember when romance novels really only had romance that <laughs> they didn't have sex in them. You know, the kiss at the end was it. Um, well, they have more than that going on in this, but it's not like, uh, you know, in gynecological detail, we'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. So you think, do you think it's headphones free appropriate or should you put the headphones on just in oh, case? I, I think you might want them on, but, but it's, okay. but, but it's on the cleaner side of that spectrum um, mm-hmm. than, than some other things that I've narrated or or heard where you're like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, um, or where you're almost, you're blushing listening to it, you know? Um, but there, there's, there's, you know, they're, they're nice. I don't know if that's the right words, but I would say they lean towards sweet and romantic more than get down with the get down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. I like those kind of books. It's kind of like it's safe for your car. It's safe for work as long as you have headphones on. And exactly. it's nothing that will have you looking crazy when you hear exactly. something. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. From all of the characters in this book and series so far, do you have a favorite that you enjoyed narrating for the most? Um, That I enjoyed narrating the most? Well, there's the yeah. wedding. All right. So... This isn't a spoiler, but but actually, as even as we're speaking, uh, the what is it? Okay, so we have the the wedding date, the proposal, and then the wedding party, and they're all interconnected in 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 ways that I unless we want to spend twenty minutes, <laughs> 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 but they're all connected. So I just finished uh, recording actually the wedding party, um, and so. So in some ways, you know, my favorite child is my last child. Um, the, the last one is the story of, of Theo and Maddie, who you do meet in the first book. Um, who do I like? Who do I like best? Um, I like, okay. So my favorite characters in the series, I'm actually going to say are Carlos and Theo. 
who you don't meet in the wedding. I mean, you do meet them, but but you don't meet them in detail. I like Alexa and I like uh, Drew, of course, and I and I really like their story. But I but between the three books, I think my favorites were my favorite characters of the men, at least, were Theo and Carlos. And of the women, I guess I'll go with Alexa. I mean, again, it really as, I, as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, you know, they really are just like my favorite children. Each one, it's like in the first book, I would have said, well, of course, you know, Alexa and Drew. And then the second book was like, well, of course, Nick and Carlos. And then and it's like, well, of course, Maddie and Theo. But <laughs> oh. um, um, is that whole, is that whole, I can't choose my favorite child. Kind exactly, of thing, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So in developing the voices for these characters, did Jasmine leave that completely up to you? Did she have some input or, you know, she said, you are professional, you go for it. Um, I have only recently had any kind of conversation with Jasmine and and that was because my daughter got me active on Instagram. <laughs> um, and so once I was there and she's promoting her books a lot, I reached out to her and said, hi, Jasmine. And she's like, hi. And, you know, it's like, I just finished the wedding. I think when I started recording the wedding party, I was like, I'm starting. And she's like, oh, good. But um, that was the first communication directly between us. So um, I was asked to do the wedding date. Uh, I guess that was fall of 2017. It came out in December, January of that year. And um, I had no, there was no conversation with Jasmine. And I mean, generally, pretty much everything you need to know is going to be in the book. And I do read, you know, you have, especially with fiction, you have to read the book beforehand. um, Because you you just never know if you just never know what's going to be revealed on page 200 that you could have known at page one that you should have known by page one as a narrator. So um, the information is basically all there. Um, but then on some books, um, um, it, it just depends on the process. With Audible, for example, they do encourage you to reach out directly to the author and just at least introduce yourself. And if I am if I am given that permission, I will reach out to the author and say, hey, I'm me. Is there anything you want to tell me about this book that, you know, I should know? But but all of that to say, Jasmine, that was not the process with Jasmine. And and I'm saying at this point, like I said, this is the, the wedding party is book three. So I know these people. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's like a lot more to come. I think I know the royal holiday is coming soon. I just saw that. I'm very excited. <laughs> Yeah. And then there's one more on Goodreads that says Untitled. So I don't know how long this series could go, but there's at least two more books that I hope that you are appearing in. (laughs) I hope so, too. (laughs) You know, I love a little cute romance. and It's perfect, actually, for summertime. It's nice. It's light. Beach reading or listening, rather. And uh, yeah, I think that's really cool. So is there anything else you would like to share with us about the wedding date before we jump into the lightning round? I I just really liked it. And I really like uh, Jasmine's books. I, I just really like her hand with it. And as you say, it's perfect it's perfect fluffiness. <laughs> I mean, there's a little mm-hmm. reality there, but not so much that you're like, no, don't tell me that. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. great for summer. It's great all year round, but it's great for summer. All right. So let's jump into the lightning round and okay. I will explain the rules for you just in case you aren't aware. It's really easy. It's 60 seconds and you just answer as many questions as you can. Some are book related, some are not. Some questions are open ended and others require you to pick one or the other. The only one rule I have is that you must choose on those type of questions. You can't say neither and you can't say both. <laughs> you have to choose. Well, I, I feel I have been in training for this because my mother's favorite show is Family Feud. So, <laughs> I'm oh, ready. yes, you got this. <laughs> okay, so I am ready, Janina, when you are. Are you ready? I'll do my best. Physical books or ebooks? Physical. Hero or villain? I'll go with villain. Tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. If you could only narrate one genre forever, what would it be? Romance. Bookstore or library? Library. Meditation or yoga? Oh, that's not fair. I'm a yoga teacher. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> that one's just for you. <laughs> Meditation. <laughs> Beach or mountain vacation? 
mountain. If you could pick one superpower, what would it be? Mm, Creating more space for books. (laughs) Standalone title or series? Series. Windows or Mac? Mac. And we're done. That's it. Oh, okay. 60 seconds gone. Okay. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I know. I could keep going. (laughs) I was going to say, no, what is, well, it's you or Steve Harvey's blah, blah, blah. (laughs) And that's a joke from Family Feud. (laughs) (laughs) They're always asking if Steve Harvey, if Steve Harvey was a blah, 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 what would you, what would you like? And they're always like, his head or whatever. Sorry. (laughs) It's, it's, it's a Family Feud thing. Oh, I missed that. I, I missed out on that. I don't really watch Family Feud, but Once in a Blue Moon. But it sounds really funny. I might have to tune in. Okay. My mom watches it every day. <laughs> oh, really? Do you watch it with her? You must watch it with her then. My mom is living with me, so yes. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so fun. Okay, cool. So thanks so much for doing that. It was really fun. Uh, do you have any last tidbits that you'd like to share before we sign off? I think you've covered it. Well, you guys be sure to follow Janina on social media and pick up a copy of The Wedding Date on audiobook. The links are below in the show notes. It has been a pleasure, Janina. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. And thanks for listening, you guys. And until next time, happy reading. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.